Over the past 150 years, our province has gone through many drastic changes. From agriculture and deforestation, to urban sprawl and hydroelectric development, our demands have had a disastrous effect on the environment. And like the rest of the world, as our population grows and our industries expand, wilderness areas are getting smaller and smaller. But only 250 kilometers from Winnipeg, on the eastern side of our province, there is a massive area of boreal shield that has been left undisturbed. And at nearly 30,000 square kilometers in size, it stands as one of the last great wilderness areas left on Earth. Ojibwe for the land that gives life, Pamachuinake encompasses a vast area of Lake Winnipeg's eastern shore, extending 80 kilometers into Ontario. More than five times the size of Prince Edward Island, it sits deep in the largest intact forest in the entire Northern Hemisphere. This astounding achievement in conservation is thanks to four surrounding First Nation communities. Since 2002, Blood Vein River, Little Grand Rapids, Pongasi, and Poplar River First Nation have worked together to preserve their shared ancestral homeland. In 2018, this dream became a reality, and Pawachwina Kay was designated Canada's only mixed UNESCO World Heritage Site for both its cultural and natural heritage. Here, all life flows from the water as the boreal shield food web remains remarkably intact. The area is over 23% wetlands, one of the most vital and threatened ecosystems around the world. The benefits of preserving these wetlands reach far beyond the boundaries of Pamachu and the Cay, as they filter and recharge much of the fresh water that enters Lake Winnipeg. They also harbor some 30,000 species of insects and over 200 species of birds. Directly in the path of three of the four migratory bird flyways in North America, Pamachuinake is home to one of the highest number of bird species diversity in the boreal ecozone. This contributes to nearly one billion birds being born in the region each year. This vast network of marshes and swamps is also prime habitat for the boreal forest's largest mammal. Moose populations across most of Manitoba are in sharp decline. Pamachuinake remains one of their last sanctuaries. There are 40 species of mammals that live in the area, the majority of which maintain healthy and stable populations. Black bears are common in all parts of the region and are some of the most adaptable mammals. Their omnivore digestive system means they can survive on anything from plants and berries to bugs and small mammals. As they prepare for hibernation, these hungry eaters can consume over 20,000 calories a day. Living in a home range of up to 24 square kilometers, here they can go about their natural feeding cycle with little or no human interference.
The rocky hills that make up this landscape are part of the Precambrian Shield, an ancient mountain range that has been worn down by hundreds of millions of years of erosion. Dating back as far as three billion years, these are some of the oldest rocks on Earth. The forests that cover them, however, are a newer development on the world stage. Moving in after glacial meltwater receded roughly 8,000 years ago, the black spruce and jack pine that dominate this area have had to adapt rather quickly to the extreme temperatures of the boreal shield. During the brutally cold winters, these trees have evolved a mechanism that transfers fluid out of their living cells into empty intercellular spaces. This way, their sap can freeze solid without doing any fatal damage to the inside of the tree. Along with this, their needles produce a thick, waxy coating, preventing water loss from the drying effects of strong winter winds. But because of their adaptations, they take an extra long time to decompose. This causes the soil here to be highly acidic and low in nutrients. Thankfully, mosses have evolved to take advantage of these inhospitable conditions and dominate much of the forest floor. It's a mutually beneficial relationship as the blanket of moss keeps the tree roots cool and damp, while also adding humidity to this dry environment. While the soil conditions in the boreal forest pose a challenge to most vegetation, one plant in particular has adapted in a clever but deadly way. The purple pitcher plant is one of 10 carnivorous plants in the province. Using a fluorescent glow invisible to the human eye, the pitcher plant attracts insects towards the opening of its bell-shaped leaves. Once inside, the insects are trapped by the slippery surface on the upper rim, as well as the tiny downward pointing hairs that line the inner leaf. At the bottom of the leaf is a pool of digestive enzymes that drown and slowly dissolve the insect. It's through this death trap that the purple pitcher plant gets the nutrients it needs that it otherwise isn't able to absorb through the acidic soil. A wide variety of lichens also inhabit Pamachuanake and can grow on everything from dead tree branches to solid rock. Part algae and part fungi, lichens are the result of another mutually beneficial relationship found in nature. The fungi provides a structure for the algae to live on while also absorbing moisture from the air. The algae, on the other hand, uses photosynthesis to feed both parties. These bizarre organisms remain intact year-round and can sometimes take over 100 years to grow. Their role in this ecosystem is a vital one. High in carbohydrates, lichens provide a consistent winter food source for many of Pamachuanake's inhabitants including one of Canada's most iconic and endangered animals. This is the woodland caribou. Once numbering in the millions, there are estimated to be only 34,000 left in Canada.
Because of logging and other disturbances in the boreal forest, woodland caribou populations have drastically dropped by more than 30% in the last 20 years. But here, in Powachuan Cay, caribou herds remain in good condition, as they have the vast stretches of undisturbed forest they need in order to thrive. Protecting this forest from development means saving the fragile family of lichens that the woodland caribou so desperately depend upon. Only with this high standard of forestry conservation can this iconic Canadian animal continue to live in the wild and avoid extinction. The importance of a place like Pomachuan Cay cannot be understated. The environmental stewardship and cooperation shown by the surrounding Anishinaabe communities should serve as a guide for wilderness conservation efforts around the world. And with the dire state of global wilderness today, success stories like Pomachuan Cay are needed now more than ever. <laughs>